OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to be here with you and I feel very honored to be a part of OTAN's Technology and Distance Learning Symposium 2021 uh, conference that's happening March 3rd through the 5th, as you know. Um, and today we're going to be talking about USA Learn Citizenship, which is a free online course. And that course is located at usalearns.org. And um, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm Andrea Willis. I'm the Director of Internet and Media Services and USA Learns at the Sacramento County Office of Education. Um, so just a little tiny bit about me. I've been in this job for about 20 years just over 20 years, and I love what I do. Um, I have the wonderful opportunity of managing a small technical development team and uh, of 10, about 10 people. We're multimedia developers and videographers and artists and voiceover artists and instructional designers and teachers. And um, we get to build really wonderful um, projects for various clients, including the California Department of Education, lots of clients within, site in my, with, within my organization, um, and don't tell my other clients, but USA Learns is, I think, the most amazing thing I've ever had the chance to work on. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. And um, Jennifer, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Um, hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm with, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm with Milpitas Adult School, and I uh, teach ESL and citizenship there. And also I work with OTAN as a subject matter expert, and I usually present on topics of the intersection between citizenship, uh, ESL, and um, and uh, computers. So, uh, looking uh, looking at that kind of intersection and matrix. Wonderful. And I'm always excited when Jennifer can present with me because you know I can speak about the website and you know how it was built and uh, but she really brings that real life teacher perspective of how she has used it and uh, you know can share some really great tips with us. And I think my yard guys have joined us for the presentation too. Oh, that's so you, might, you might hear them outside. They thought they would come too. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about various topics. I'll share with you a brief overview of USA Learns. And um, Jennifer will share with us a bit about some recent happenings related to US citizenship. And she has some really great info for teachers. I'll give you a little tour of our USA Learns citizenship course. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how the course can help with some of the challenges faced by teachers and learners. I'll show you how your learners register, and um, I'll also show you how to create a teacher account in your very own free USA Learns courses. Okay, so just a little bit of history and overview about USA Learns. So the site, um, the project was originally, originally funded by a grant from the Federal Office of Vocational and Adult Education. And the feds wanted to know if adults can learn English online. And after having, after having had so many people come to our website, we think the answer is yes. Um, so the site launched originally in 2008. And at the end of that grant, uh, my organization, the Sacramento County Office of Education, was given ownership after a competitive process. And we are so happy that we were able to take it over because it's truly been a labor of love for us. And we have thoroughly enjoyed being able to maintain it and grow it. Um, the site has been upgraded several times. So when you say, ooh, 2008, that's a really old website. We've actually updated it under the hood quite a lot. And we have some other really exciting upgrades happening right now as we speak. Um, and one thing I always like to share is that we are totally committed to keeping this site always 100% free. And so the way we do that is we do have some ads on the site and you'll notice those as I give you the tour. And I mention it because a lot of times people say, ooh, ads, that's bad. But actually when you see the ads, I want you to think, oh, ads, that's good because that's how we were able to pay a programmer to keep this thing alive and do tech support and create new classes and things like that. And we're very, we hesitated for a long time to put the ads. Um, we keep them out of the learning area. We try to keep them, you know, as uh, we don't want them to be confusing. So anyway, there's my little pitch about why ads. And I have um, created a view only version of this presentation. And uh, at this URL here, which is https colon slash slash tinyurl.com slash 
Y seven seven B as in boy Z T M A. So anyway, I invite you to check that out later if you want to. Okay, so let me share just a little bit of usage statistics with you. Um, we've had 1.8 billion web pages viewed and 15 million visitors come to our site, which to me, that's just huge. I love those numbers. Um, and when people come, they stay for quite a while. They stay for on the average 23 minutes, which is a really long time for websites. Um, and our site has been accessed by every single country in the world. Oh my goodness, the yard guys are right outside my window. Okay, so here we're looking at a map of the United States and the, stop, the top states that use our site are Florida, California, Texas, New York, and Massachusetts. Okay, a little bit about the, the top cities using USA Learns. And I'm just gonna read these in order. Um, of course, Los Angeles is number one. They're always the biggie no matter what, right? Followed by Lake Elsinore, San Francisco, San Diego, San Jose, Fresno, Stockton, Sacramento, Ontario, Fremont, Santa Clara, Santa Ana, Oakland, Hawthorne, Carm I don't even know where Hawthorne is, do you? <laughs> Carmichael, Wildemar, Hacienda Heights, Irvine, Garden Grove, and Chula Vista. So anyway, those are the top cities. You just might see your city there. And if it's not there now, maybe it'll be there next week after you use it a lot. Okay, so hey, Jennifer, maybe you could tell us about some of the recent happenings related to uh, citizenship that would affect oh, teachers. I'm gonna okay. give you up to five minutes. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this is it. Okay. Very good. So uh, yesterday I presented in uh, uh, citizenship. I, I'm sorry if this is a repetitive. Um, I, okay. So uh one of the big things last summer is that USCIS uh, uh, updated their uh, website to make it much more mobile friendly. Uh, they added some new tools so they can uh, people can check their case status online, and more importantly, uh, submit a uh, case inquiry. And what a case inquiry is is that uh, if their um, case uh, is out of um, if it's gone on too long. So for instance, they applied in, uh, in March and they still haven't gotten any response from uh, USCIS. They can submit a case inquiry and say, please take a look and uh, see what's going on with my case. Um, also, um, they made some more updates to USCIS Citizenship Resource Center. So all the lovely lesson plans that we're so dependent on have been updated, How and but more importantly, the links have been updated. So the old links that you've embedded in your, um, your Google Classroom or Canvas course or whatever the case may be, those are now all um, obsolete and you have to go back and update them. But it's really worth it because the, the quality of the, the stuff that, that's, that USCIS has. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the 2008 test versus the 2020 test. Last November, they announced that they were going to implement the 2020 test on December the 1st. And in February 22nd, uh, they basically rescinded the test. Uh, there was a lot of uh, um, pushback from the community because uh, they did not like they did not like the test and truly the test was not uh, through the vetting process that they would normally have where they would roll it out into the communities and do a lot of pilot testing uh, they were if they did were able to pilot test it but with a very very small number of school uh, of people uh, not representative, I think, of the American immigrant population. So USCIS did listen and did respond and did rescind that test. And I want to share uh, four um, screenshots from the March 3rd webinar. I'm going to just blow through this stuff that I have about the um, uh, no, I'm going to do one. One of the biggest problems with the test was the uh, people were really upset about these questions. Who does a U.S. senator represent? And they're saying the citizens of their state. These questions here, these four questions were very much in um, paralleled the attempt by the 
previous administration to include questions related to citizenship on the census, and then also um, related to the um, push that they uh, that they wanted to basically not count uh, undocumented people within the state. And you know, documented or undocumented people, those people are accessing our um, our public services. So um, anyway, uh, USCIS was able to respond to uh, the cases that came down from the Supreme Court and uh, respond to the community and basically rescind this. Um, oh, if you want to see some further information about that, you could take a look at it. This is one of the slides from the uh, the March third webinar when they talking about the rescind, uh, taking back the test. They're talking about some people if they've studied those one hundred and twenty eight questions, they still can be tested on that. Um, here's a comparison of who can take what test. So if you've if you've um, studied or if you apply between December the 20th and March the 1st, you can choose to take the 2020 test or the 2008 test. Uh, continue on from there. Again, they were doing a comparison of how people did on the 2008 test versus the 2020 test. They're saying that uh, a lot of people were still passing. However, I think there was a really small sample size and really not reflective of uh, the American immigrant population at large. And um, I'm gonna do two more updates. Uh, American, uh, or sorry, preparing the oath from uh, Smithsonian has updated the website. They're no longer using a flash, which is really great. So if you need students to uh, study civics, there's one, um, there's one uh, video for every single one of the civics questions. And I want to talk about CASAS. CASAS, uh, I would say that the COAB, EL Civics COAPS 54 about the 2020 census is still valid because it's related to apportionment. Uh, the census still needs to publish their findings from the 2020 census. We need to prepare for the American Community Survey where there's 30 questions on that, that survey and it does ask things about citizenship or legal status. And this is very important because uh, they're taking a look at how best to uh, a portion of money for hospitals and schools, et cetera, et cetera. Second thing from US, uh, from uh, CASAS is that the CIT can be administered remotely. So the way I administer it is I have a fillable PDF of the CIT test. I have a Zoom call uh, open with my students or a Facebook, uh, FaceTime call. And I basically ask the questions and mark the uh, the questions on the fillable PDF and then send that into my office and they're very happy with it. And right now CASAS is field testing uh, a citizenship listening test and that's really great. So that's it for my updates and I'm gonna turn it back over to Andrea. There you go. Does anybody- Thank you, thank you so much. That? Yeah, does anyone have questions for Jennifer? Feel free. Okay, real good, thank you. Okay, can you all see my screen and hear me? Yeah. yeah, okay, great. All right, so Jennifer, thank you so much for those thoughts. Those were great. <clears throat> okay, so let me share with you a few key things that I think are important to know about USA Learns. <clears throat> First of all, there's a learner website and you find that at usalearns.org. So that's where you would send your students to study. And there's also a teacher site and it is located at usalearns.org slash teacher. So that's kind of important to know. So just a quick overview about our citizenship course. It, um, it's for intermediate, it uses intermediate level language. Um, and it, what makes it so special in my opinion is that it helps prepare our learners for all aspects of the naturalization interview. And that's really very special, I think, because there's, there are lots and lots of websites where you can go and study the 100 questions. And that's, that's pretty easy. And from what I hear from people, the 100 questions is not the hardest part of the interview. Most people pass that part. It's more the N400 section. And in my opinion, that is what 
you know, the way that we help people prepare to answer those questions about their N400 application, that's what makes this really special. So um, the topics we cover um, include getting legal help, steps becoming a citizen, avoiding fraud, preparing for the N400 application questions, um, US history and government, speaking, reading, writing, small talk, and lots more. And um, so far about 300,000 learners have completed about 3 million activities in that course. And um, I just love the, that our website makes that possible, especially during the pandemic. It was great because we were already up and running and we're a fairly well-known um, website in the adult ed world. So <coughs> teachers and learners were able to just come, come right to our site and not have a big uh, gap in service, I guess. Okay, so just a little bit of bonus info, info for you. We also have various English courses. We have the first English course, which is low beginning to high beginning ESL and includes 20 video based units about survival English language. We have English one plus, which is beginning high, intermediate, low, and based on Voice of America's Let's Learn English videos. And here we yeah, have- my, my, my students are using this right now. Are they? Do they like it? I'm using it? ESL1. Yes. Can I, oh, can I talk really please. quickly about this? Yes, please do. So I love for it's, you to talk. It's, so this was a, a series, a weekly series originally for VOA, uh, VOA um, News. Uh, their their ESL component is VOA Learning English. And so there's 52, um, 52 weeks of lessons. And so you can go to the, the website and look at the, the, uh, the, the, the short, uh, like five minute uh, lessons about this person is learning to work, this person is learning how to interrupt, this person is learning how to apologize in a business setting in Washington, DC. However, uh, VOA took the best of that series and added a whole bunch of more of interactive activities. So you can really dig into the vocabulary. So I think it's made the, the course so much better because when you were originally doing the uh, VOA um, learning English video series, you would just sit there and passively receive the information or maybe you would do one of the grammar worksheets from VOA. VOA, uh, sorry, USA Learns has enabled students to actually interact with the vocabulary and practice a lot of the listening. They really like it. So I'm using this now on my uh, ESL one class um, in Zoom and it's really, uh, really helped out my students. I love so, that. Thank, thank you. That's lovely. Thank you so much. And yeah, as you, as you mentioned, Jennifer, uh, you mentioned something that we at USA Learns absolutely love to do, which is we love to find a high quality video series that we can get the rights to use. And what we do is we take that those videos and we chop them up into little tiny pieces. Yeah. And then we, we build instruction around all those videos because, and the students really get into it. They like, they, they get um, kind of attached to the characters. They wanna tune back in, watch more videos, see what Anna is gonna do. You know, she gets herself in trouble at work and they wanna see how she's gonna get out of trouble and that kind of thing. So yeah, great. Thank you for sharing, that was good. All right, another one is second English course. I also love this one. We've got our, our genie and some really wonderful characters um, that, that are just really fun to watch. Um, this is intermediate level and it's 20 uh, video based units about job and life skills. And then the last one, just quickly here, um, practice English and reading, also intermediate level. It's based on real life news stories that we got from a, a, a news station here in Sacramento a while back teaches reading, vocabulary, speaking, and comprehension. And for those of you who have been around forever, like I have, you might remember the California Distance Learning Project website. Well, my team built that forever ago. And um, this course's content is actually the, the content that we pulled from CDLP site and put in here. Um, because we love that interactive piece, as Jennifer mentioned, we love being able to let the students interact with the content, not just passively sit there and watch it. And I think they really like the speaking activities where they're basically repeating back um, and listening to themselves. They really enjoy that part. Cool, that's mm -hmm. good. I love, I love to hear that. And then this is our newest course. It's called Skills for the Nursing Assistant, which launched on October 5th. It's intermediate um, advanced ESL and it teaches specifically communications skills for the healthcare field. It covers the language and academic skills 
to help um, entry level medical workers be successful on the job. So I invite you to check that one out too. Okay, so back to USA Learn Citizenship. One thing I'm really proud about is the high quality content. We worked with a team of about 30 people to, to create this course. Um, we worked with expert ESL and citizenship teachers and immigration attorneys at Immigrant Legal Resource Center, you know, um, program specialists at United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, also known as USCIS. Um, and it has high quality resources that align with USCIS adult ed citizenship education content standards and foundation skills. And it uses USA Learn's best practices. And when I say it uses our best practices, I mean that when you've had so many people come to your website, you kind of know where they get stuck, what's easy, what's hard, what they like, what they don't like. And so, you know, we try to only use those best approaches in, as we develop our new courses. Okay, so um, for those of you who have been teaching this stuff forever, you probably know this. For those of you who are newer to it, let's just do a quick little rundown. I don't know, Jennifer, do you want to, do you want to cover this slide or I can? Well, I, you know, one thing that I've been asking myself is how many people have used USA Learns First before? Oh, yeah. Hey, Holly, maybe you could watch the chat. If you guys could tell us in the chat, Absolutely. have you used, have you used USA Learns before? Yes or no? Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, yay. Yay. No. No. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it looks like. All right. Some yeses no. and some nos. Yeah. Okay. So let's just go through this slide. <clears throat> so what all happens? Let's imagine. Let's imagine um, you you're you're you, you have applied to be a U.S. citizen. So what happens during that interview? So let's just go down this list. Um, Jennifer, jump in whenever you want. I'll oh, just start. Okay. I'll start. Um, or, or you can. Whatever. Uh, so uh, usually, uh, of course, the your the small talk is super important because this is when the the uh, the examiner is trying to assess. Uh, how much English you understand. Um, uh, then they go through, they ask you the 10 questions from USCIS uh, list of questions. And we're so happy that it's only um, 10 questions as opposed to the 12 and the 128 questions. There's the reading and writing of one sentence. And then uh, they're going to ask you the questions for the N-400 application for naturalization. So what's really important is, is that a lot of people think that the, um, the citizenship interview is only the 100 questions and they're not prepared for the N-400 questions. That's where they usually fail. So USA Learns basically addresses this problem by putting this matter for, at the forefront. Also, uh, US, uh, one of the big problems with citizenship is a lot of times people get really bad legal advice. So USA Learns puts that at the forefront. So thank great. you so much. Thank yeah. you, that's great, thank you. Um, okay, Andrea, Yeah. we do have a question Okay, what you got? Okay, she Christina. Said, is a student allowed a translator at the interview? Um, I'm gonna yeah, let Jennifer I can. Um, it depends on the person if they uh, if they notified. Um, okay, there's two things. Number one, it depends on what's happening with COVID in their in their county. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it really depends if um, if they've told the if they said before or they contacted USCIS before and said that this person used a translator to do their USCIS application, they're going to be using a, uh, a translator during the, uh, during the uh, interview. So they just can't show up with the interviewer. Also, the interviewer has to be a legitimate interviewer. So some people understand Spanish really well. You mean translator, right? Translate, so thank, thank you so much, the translator. But they can't say exactly what the officer is saying in English, uh, in what they're, they don't exactly translate what the officer is saying because they don't understand the technical vocabulary. So it really depends what you mean as a translator. And remember, um, they, people really need to, uh, uh, be mindful of the fact that the, the interview is done in English unless people have been in the United States 
for uh, unless the person is over, uh, I believe it's 50, 55 years old and has been in the United States for 20 years. And it's not only that they've been in the United States for 20, 20 years, they have to have a green card for 20 years. Mm. And so that's that kind of stuff can be really problematic. The thing is, is that a student does not need to speak English a lot during the interview, but they have to be able to understand English and they have to be able to sh give short answers. So when the person was asking about the translator, uh, were they thinking of a specific scenario? Who is asking the question? Oh, Christina. Kristen. It's me. Oh. Hi. Christina. Yeah, hi. hi. What's going on? Hi. What are you thinking of? <laughs> yeah, good to see tell you. Us, tell us, tell us. So I, so all my students, you know, uh, speak English, but I had a new student, one student, and I had a family member, and I know this student from years ago, and she sure. said, my, my mom just does not speak um, English uh, very well, and she's like a level two, she understands, but she doesn't speak it, so she said, is she allowed to translate her, and other students no. who've just, who just taken the test, and come back and you know, described what had happened, said, well, you probably have to notify USCIS yeah. somehow and get some kind of approval. So I didn't know if you knew anything about that. Yeah, it depends. Also, what office, I'm sorry, Christine, I did ask, what office are you going to, Los Angeles or San Francisco? Where are you no, going? Th this is San Jose. Oh, in San Jose? Yeah. Um, Gee, I don't know if anybody going in with a translator a long time. Um, Christina, let me, I'm going to, yeah. um, you know what? Can I connect up with you later on? Of and course, get that yes. Okay. You have my email okay. or I can send you an yeah. email. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing, uh, one other thing about, because the, because we just went, we just moved uh, zones at our COVID-19 restrictions. A lot of people were saying no to translators because of COVID-19. So that's oh. one of the considerations. Mm. But seriously, if you're at ESL2, I've had ESL2 students pass the citizenship test because honestly, they do not need to know how to speak that much English. They need to know how to yes, no, and they need to know how to uh, give personal information. But that's, a, that's about it. Uh, because remember, the test, the USCIS interview, it's not a vocabulary test. So they're not going to be, so even though they need to understand what um, a prison is or a persecution is and everything like that, they need to be able to understand it. And if they have if they don't understand what the officer says, they say, they need to be able to say, I don't understand, please explain before they say yes or no to the question. And so those are the kind of skills that they need to go to go into the test. How many times are they allowed to repeat the question? Is it twice? What do you mean by, uh, oh, like if I'm asking you, like, uh, have you ever persecuted anyone? Yes. Okay. They don't have a set, they don't have a set number of times they have to repeat, but they, there is a difference between uh, saying, please repeat and please explain. Oh. Can you say As, that? Can you say that in another way or can you? Yeah. Can you say that in another way? I remember when I was or studying please explain. to, to yeah. be a, a citizen for a test of a casas, yeah. uh, they somehow came up with, you can only um, ask to repeat the question twice. Yeah, uh, that's, for, that's for the CIT. That's not for the US citizenship okay. interview. Okay, okay. Okay. Great. Anyway, thank we'll, you. We'll, co we'll connect up on the translator. That's a really okay, good thank question. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, um, so, um, in talking with various teachers over the years, um, you know, I love to ask people, hey, so what are some of the biggest challenges that your students have experienced during the test? Or what are some of the most difficult parts of, of teaching this to your learners? So if you want, you could feel free to enter, the, enter, any, enter any, uh, any of those ideas into the chat. 
Um, in the meantime, I'll share with you my list that I have kind of collected here. So many teachers tell me that it's very difficult vocabulary, right? Especially as related to those N400 questions. And there's lots and lots of that vocabulary. Um, the English speaking part is tricky, right? <clears throat> A lot of people don't realize that the, um, the minute the, the interviewer or the officer meets the applicant, that officer is already you know, listening to the small talk in the hallway and determining, hmm, does this person speak English? Um, part 12 of the N400 <clears throat> is also very tricky. All those words like, have you ever committed genocide, homicide, or any other kind of side? Um, questions about, <clears throat> excuse me, illegal activities are difficult because you're, you're speaking about some very personal. Oops, you're muted. Oops. Oh, you're still muted. Yeah, there you I go. Think I, it said the host muted you, Polly. <laughs> I'm not even touching my mouse. <laughs> Everybody got tired of hearing me, so they're like, stop talking. Mute her. I, um, I'm sorry, I muted you. Oh, uh, you I muted wanted to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swear I didn't do anything. That's okay, no problem. Anytime you get tired, just mute me. Um, so anyway, <laughs> you might not have heard me say, you know, those questions about illegal activities are difficult, right? They're personal questions. It's difficult words to explain, oh gosh, what did I do that was not legal? Um, those questions about the time spent outside of the US, those are tricky too. I mean, I personally, if someone asked me, tell me all the dates in which you left and entered the United States over the past five years, I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. I would need to prepare for those questions. Um, and then just the general stress of the interview, right? Those unknowns. So anyway, hey, Holly, did we get any comments in the chat about other things that are tricky? No, we did not, not yet. All right, all right, well, we can always talk about those in a bit. Okay, so I would like to now give you a little tour of the course. Okay, so here we are at usalearns.org on our homepage. And if this was my very first time here, I would click start now, but it's not my first time here. I've been here about a million times. So I'm going to sign in with my student um, <clears throat> account information. I will enter my email address that I used on the student site and I will enter my password and I will sign in. Okay, so here I am on the USA Learns, my homepage. And these are all of the courses that we offer. I shared a little info with you about these before, so we won't get into that here. But I'm gonna scroll down till I get to USA Learn Citizenship. And here we are on the uh, unit menu page. And we have four units. They are steps to becoming a US citizen, the N400 interview practice, civics reading and writing practice, and it's all based on the um, 2008 questions, uh, your interview and new citizenship. <clears throat> so let's just, um, I'm going to give you a little tour of some of my favorite parts. And hey, Jennifer, feel free to jump in anytime if there's something you want me to show. Okay, so here on the lesson menu uh, for the steps to becoming a U.S. citizen unit, we have three lessons. They are become a U.S. citizen, the first steps, and be prepared. So let's just take a little peek. Okay, so here we are on the activity menu and these blue bars here represent the various topics that are covered. So we've got the introduction, why become a US citizen and am I eligible? So let's just check out a little sequence here. So the welcome video and we have this here. It says, um, play the video to learn about this course. So let's play this YouTube video and I'm gonna click the read text button so that it, um, oops, there we go. Welcome to USA Learns Citizenship. My name is Jean, and I'll be your guide through this course. So we won't listen to the whole thing, but we have a nice little intro video that folks can watch. <clears throat> and then um, let me point out a button that I especially like on the course. It's the next button. And it might seem weird to get all excited about a button, but I love this button because um, I can click that button literally and make it through the entire course. I don't need to be a computer genius. I don't have to have amazing uh, computer skills to go through the course. So I'm gonna hit next. Okay, so here we have our learning goals and here we are supposed to read the learning goals for this lesson and then select listen to hear the goals. So let's just do that. It's a nice little short one. In this lesson, you will learn about the reasons to become a US citizen. You will also learn about the requirements for becoming a US citizen. Okay, 
and Andrea, we do have yes. a question. Great. What is do the we, question? Do we create a student or teacher account to access the videos? Yeah, that's a really great question. <clears throat> so USA Learns, ha as I shared, there's a learner side and there's a teacher side. So if you want to kind of preview the course like a, a learner would see it, you're going to want to create your own learner account. So I know that's always kind of a point of confusion confusion because it's confusing. Um, and someday we'd like to change that, but for now that's kind of how it is. So if you want to watch the videos and see the content, you're going to create yourself a student account. Um, you know what? And one of the reasons why you want to create a student account initially is for instance, uh, if you just send a student to USA Learns um, uh, course, it's really a large course and students can get lost in it because there's so much. So what I have been doing is using USA Learns as a quick warm up for my citizenship classes. And so I log in as my student, as a student, I do a demo of uh, one of the, the videos or the lessons or the vocabulary, whatever the case may be. And that has actually inspired students to sign up themselves rather than me putting everybody into using a teacher account and putting everybody into the course. So um, I really would say initially sign up as a uh, teacher and you may wanna use one of your supplementary accounts as opposed to your teacher's email address, okay? So uh, when I, sign up as a teacher, I mean, sorry, as if I'm demonstrating as a student, I'm going to use usccitizenpod at gmail.com or gmail.org.com. And then when I'm doing a teacher and I'm gathering my students together to organize them in a class cohort, that's when I would use sign up as a te on a teacher account. You can't use both. You can't use the same email for both. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. So, so you're saying, Jennifer, use kind of your your more um, standard the email address you use the most and that you check the most. Use that one for your teacher account. And if you have some other email address that you don't care that much about, use your use that for your student account, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, Thank second. you. That was a great point. Love it. Okay. Hong Mei. Hong Mei. Okay. F Friday, 10 o'clock. 12. She muted me too. Okay. All right. I'm back. Okay. So here we are in uh, Why Become a U.S. Citizen Watch and Learn. So we have some. Um, information about why one should become a citizen. And we have a nice little video here that we've created. You'll notice lots and lots and lots of videos and multimedia. There's probably thousands of audio files and video files and images and things like that that we've created. So let's just take a little peek at this video, 10 reasons to become a US citizen. I'm gonna fast forward. Okay, here First, we go. as a US citizen, you have the right to remain in the United States. You cannot be deported. Before I became a U.S. citizen, I worried about changing immigration laws. Now I feel confident that I can stay here for the rest of my life. U.S. citizens can help more family members get legal status in the U.S. and in a shorter time. After I became a citizen, my mom came to live with us from Taiwan. So anyway, there's a little sample of some of our video work that we've done for this course. Okay, and then here we have a check your understanding activity and the instructions say to select all of the correct answers. And the question is, what are some benefits of becoming a US citizen? The answer options are, you can vote, you can travel with US passport, you can help family members come to the US, your young children can more easily become US citizens, check, yay. So you see, I got two stars. That means I got it right on my first try. If I would have answered incorrectly, I would have had another try at it and I would have only received one star and that grade would reflect on my menu page. Okay, so let's see here, am I eligible? Okay, so this is a learn keywords activity and let me show you how we teach the vocabulary. Um, so we have an image and an audio file. 
USCIS. And then we have it, um, there's typically a definition and a sample sentence. So here, the definition is United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. And the sample sentence is the USCIS office will process your application for citizenship. And I will select the next button. And we have naturalization and at least requirement. Okay, so you get the idea. That's how we teach vocabulary. Um, let me see here. I'm going to now um, select this lesson menu button. And let me point this button out while we're here. Um, whenever you see one of these buttons, these menu buttons, and you want to go back a level, go ahead and select that button and it'll just take you back a level. And um, like now it says unit menu, I could click that and go to the unit menu. Um, so here we are. Let's see, what are the first steps? Okay, so we have some learning goals. We give a little overview here about the first steps of becoming a citizen. You need to complete the N-400 form um, and you need to know what it costs. And um, there's a big push here about getting legal help if you need it. And uh, we had partnered with the New Americans campaign who um, provides lots of amazing services for our applicants. Citizenship works. Okay, so let's see here. So after you submit your N-400, what happens? You know, you might be called to go um, for your biometrics appointment, um, which I think just is basically you're getting a photo, you're doing your fingerprints, various things like that. And what do you do if you move and some things to prepare before the interview? A little overview of what happens during the naturalization interview, some info about exceptions and accommodations, what happens after the interview, and then we have a little check your understanding activity. Okay, lots and lots of info about being prepared. Um, we have some really great resources for how to study. So of course, we always suggest that people study this course because we think it's a very uh, helpful resource for people at USA Learns. The USCIS website also has some great, um, some great learning resources there. And of course, citizenship and English classes at an adult school near you, we can't leave those important people out. And there's always your local library. Okay, and then as I shared, lots and lots of info in here about do I need legal help? And we have um, a bunch of information about the red flags. And um, you know that's basically if you had to answer yes to any of these questions, you may need to get, you should get some qualified legal help. So Jennifer, if you wanna say anything about red flags, I saw you unmuted yourself. Oh, uh, right, yeah, I was, did wanna say red flags. Um, yeah. uh, one of the things is, is for instance, if you've had, a lot of our students have had arrest because of um, maybe for, um, what is that called, drunk driving or have done some jail time way in the past, even if they've had their files expunged, they need to come back and take, uh, and uh, uh, they need to have, uh, get some um, legal assistance to help uh, practice those questions and uh, also to access the court records. So it's easy enough to access court records for like traffic. They simply go to the police station and petition for those court records. And down in San Jose, you, you pay $10 and you get that. But for some people it can be very, very intimidating. So even um, using this opportunity to walk uh, your students or giving them a, a quick, website tour of this is how you petition to get your court records of is going to be really really helpful and it will give them the confidence to go to to do it themselves so um very uh, so this is good and some of them are some of the questions are a little bit uh more uh difficult for instance um I had a student who was really stuck in citizenship. Was it moving forward and backward? It turned out that she had a prior um, situation where it was uh, domestic violence, they, mm -hmm. or excuse me, child abuse, that uh, her child accused her of abusing her child, uh, uh, being abused, where um, 
and the the thing was is that it was, there was a new baby in the house and the the mother was working with the baby and couldn't pay enough enough attention to the to the daughter but the thing is is the cop the cops did our child services did come away and take away the kids and it was one of the most traumatic experiences of my my student's life and she she said i mean when she was telling me about it she was crying 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 so we there was a lot of emotions that were involved with it. We worked with her so she could explain it simply and have the documentation. And she was able to pass that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you need to address those kind of emotions in private with your student. And you have to be sensitive as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And you have to not only address the English aspect of it, but you know, I'm not a lawyer. So you're going to say, I can hook you up with uh, the legal services in San Jose and um, how they would access your court records, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of really rich stuff connected with the red flags, but um, it's going to be difficult to get to that. And you do not want to exploit your students. You don't want to scare them off. You don't want to re-traumatize them. So, right. Okay. That's great info. Thank you for sharing that, Jennifer. I always love to hear your kind of your personal experience of how your yeah. students have, you know, dealt with these kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, here we are on the unit menu. Let's talk a little bit about N400 interview practice. Um, so let's see here. So we have an um, in unit introduction. Oh, wait, wait a second. Can you go back? Yeah. Can you go back to the activity? Is yeah. anybody, I want to just stop. And So they've taken the N400. They broke it in down into 10 different sections. Does anybody want to, is anybody working with a really problematic section that they would like great to Great question. See? Yeah, great question. All right. Well, I think I'll start, and then if you anyone has any ideas, just let me know. Well, I have, I have, I have something oh. more to say about that. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So, um, oh, have you ever? I we like have, number six ever. because okay. um, the family relations. The person in in these uh, uh, later uh, stories, like Chen's story and Rosa's story, some of them do not have the most. Some people do not have the most perfect relationship histories. They don't, they may have been living with a boyfriend or girlfriend. They might have a child with one person. They might have uh, a, a relationship or marriage with another, or there might be divorce and everything like that. This is when the students really start digging into the course because it's, there's a little bit of drama and it's much more interesting for them. So this is when the, the USA Learns starts picking up interest for my students. If you could go back to the previous, um, uh, previous ones, if you're talking about 2.7 all the way down to 2.10, these are the part, the sections about part, part 12. And this is gonna be really helpful for your students to go in. And even uh, you yourself can use these as uh, demonstrations because there's some really clear vocabulary, some very interesting scenarios, things about arrests, et cetera, et cetera, that will really help you learn uh, the vocabulary. Because if you're talking about arrests, some people have never experienced the arrest, but they're interested in reading experiences or listening to experience about, about people who have been to through that. So right. now this so, is going to start getting more real. Yeah, great. That's a great point. And Edith had suggested um, maybe we check out something that includes the have you ever stuff. And so maybe yeah. illegal activities would be a good one. Yeah. So anywhere from 2.7 to 2.10, that's where you're digging into the part 12, have you ever questions. So take a look at Paul's story. So you've gone through the keywords, et cetera, et cetera. Here, you're going to read his scenario and you can listen to it. And then you're seven going to be years ago, questions. Paul was stopped by the police after he had been drinking at a party. So we hear a little bit about his story. He got stopped by the police. They took him to the station. He stayed the night in jail. He had to pay nine thousand dollars. The job, the judge did not give him more jail time, et cetera, et cetera. And wow. then we answer. My so students questions. say that he got off cheap too. He That's got off like, cheap. Oh, it's oh. so much more in Santa Clara County. <laughs> <laughs> and it's somebody says, How funny. do you know? And then the I person doesn't say anything more. <laughs> 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 
Mm, I'm not saying. No comment. I know. It happened to a friend. Yeah. Yeah. So we have <clears throat> some really great listening um, activities here. So let's see what. So I think this is just basically going to read this. Have you ever committed, oh, no, assisted in committing, or attempted to commit a crime or offense for which you were not arrested? Ooh, so what will Paul say? Um, I think he'll say, no, I have not. Okay, ooh, I got it right. And so what's this- really important is you're teaching your students how to listen for key, key vocabulary because they're going to hear all this vocabulary coming at them. A lot of students, their initial reaction is, oh, I hear the have you, I'm going to say no. And it's like, no, you have to actually, if you just sit there and look look blankly and do a a reactionary no to the have you question, the students, that's when the USCIS officer will actually stop you and ask you to start defining things. So students really have to listen for those keywords. Yes. Oh, oh I s- a f- 14 wives. Wow. Wow. That's you a lot of wives. Really happening stuff, Christina. In our chat, he we wanted, see. He wanted to know what to say. <laughs> so I'm a generous man with a lot of love. So. <laughs> Something. <laughs> wow. That's wow. That's interesting. Um, okay. So then we'll have, you know, so we have the key words. And like I, you know, showed earlier, we've got. We've got, you know, meaning match. Um, and these are really good. Uh, those those are really good. Um, the front part, excuse me, can you step back? What, what, Absolutely. What, really quickly. Yeah. Uh, when you're learning the key words, I don't know about you all, but I've struggled for hours and hours and hours of finding the appropriate pictures for the definitions of these things. Here, you can almost use this as a slideshow to present the vocabulary, and it's just so helpful. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. And, I, and I'll share with you, I'm, I call myself the queen photo searcher, so most of these pictures, I found them, and some mm-hmm. of them were not easy. Not you know? easy. Yeah. Not easy, cause, because you want someone to look at that picture and just know what it is, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so arrested. And it's always interesting when you're looking for pictures, it's like, okay, you've got to have the handcuffs very obvious, you know, anyway. Cited, detained. I like that look of embarrassment she I had. know, she's like, ah, yeah, yeah. oh, I did it. <laughs> and I'm busted, detained, mm-hmm. charged with a crime, convicted of a crime, rehab. Sentence, suspended sentence, probation. And a lot of these things are not actually part of our students' experience, lived experiences. So showing the pictures, not as a cartoon, but as real life photos is really, really important. Right. And see this one paroled, you know, it's like, how do you show that visually? Well, we went with the ball and chain that is now off of the guy's foot and now he is walking away. Mm. So yeah, lots of, we put a lot of attention into the imagery. Okay, so here's a little listening activity. <laughs> Select the four key words you hear. So let's listen. Have you ever committed, assisted in committing, or attempted to commit a crime or offense for which you were not arrested? And they're not in order, so it's not that easy, right? Those, yeah. I love those activities. <laughs> okay. So that, oh, let's show, um, I would like to show you how we practice speaking. Oh, shoot. Of course, I picked the one with me in it when I looked younger. Okay. And with this one, we want them to practice, we want the learner to practice asking, you know, the officer to slow down or say it again. So I say it really fast on purpose. Have you ever lied to any U.S. government officials to gain immigration benefits while in the U.S.? (laughs) Okay. So now I'm supposed to say what it says on screen here. I'm sorry, could you say that more slowly? And then I hit, okay, so I clicked listen at first. I I got to hear the native English speaker. So now I'm going to select the speak button and say what the text says there. I'm sorry, could you say that more slowly? And then I hit stop, then I hit playback and I will hear the native English speaker's first voice first and then my voice. I'm sorry, could you say that more slowly? I'm sorry, could you say that more slowly? And I can do this activity as many times as I want with no embarrassment of feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm saying it too much. 
Okay, so anyway, that's how we do speaking. All right, Jennifer, anything else on this slide we would like to look at? I just really uh, feel that this, um, is this 7.2.7? Um, this is 2.9. Or is it 2.9? If you access one module, make sure you hit 2.9. 2.8 and 2.9 are really that's the best great. modules, uh, I think. That's and then, great. of course, the the other things with in civics and when you're doing the uh, uh, if you could step back one more menu. Yeah. So, of course, when you do the civics, uh, there's you could go to Smithsonian, but here it's self contained in this in USA Learns and your interview and your new citizenship. So this is really interesting because a lot of students get so bogged down in learning this stuff, they don't realize, you know, there's going to be there's going to be the interview itself, which is going to happen outside the classroom. And then also, what are you going to do as a new citizen? What? Uh, so this is a really good section too. this. Good. This section really gives people hope. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So let, let's check out civics reading and writing practice. OK. <clears throat> So you all are probably familiar with that box of the 100 questions, right? Those lovely flashcards. So when we started planning um, this lesson or this unit, we um, we basically took that box of cards and we, we went to a big long conference table back in the day when you could actually go to the office. And we went through the cards. We said, oh, look, here's one about geography. And we started a pile of cards about geography. Oh, look, here's one about our system of government. You know, so we kind of categorize them and he said okay well we ended up with this list of basically um 16 or 15 topics <clears throat> and so then we um created content around it so let's let's check out some things so us geography you, is one of them mm -hmm. do you realize this is basically <clears throat> a class list or a syllabus of a normal us cis a citizenship class is it we usually gonna... start geography proceed through the history and then go into um um the um politics except probably we would put symbols up by geography but oh, okay. this is like almost like every class okay we're going to do the geography section we're going to do the early american section the next class the next class the next class nice that's great so, that's yeah. great so <clears throat> so as a teacher jennifer do you sometimes let's say you know you've got your plan of what you're going to teach do you sometimes say oh you know what there's a nice little piece yeah, of usa learning I do. about that yeah nice uh, so um, can we go to the legislative branch? That's where we are right now. Yeah, let's go to legislative branch. OK, so what so, would you do with this, Jennifer? If you're huh? you're teaching about legislative branch, of how course, would you I would this? basically usually present the keywords first. Mm -hmm. uh, my students really do like the listening and the uh, meaning match. Um, mm -hmm. But then they have the civics lesson under uh, let's watch. I really sometimes I skip that. I actually go to the comprehension check. Ah. It really depends what's going on. Uh, I always like that there's a grammar point. Uh, there is and there are. And I cannot tell you how many thousand times I have asked, somebody said, teacher, who's my congressman? It's like, oh, my God, I've made videos of this. I have a TPR for this, all sorts of things. And I still need to answer this question. So, so here um, it is again. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, so you talk about that, and of course the civics questions. But if you want to step through those each, that would be that would be good to would see. Would that be nice? Okay, great. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's see here. So learning goals. Um, we're going to learn words and information about the legislative branch. Identify keywords when listening. Practice your answers to 13 civics questions about legislative branch and practice speaking and spelling for the reading and writing tests. Okay, we can do that. So here's our vocabulary. Congress. Congress, we have definition, we have a sample sentence. So the definition, the, the Senate and the House of Representatives and the sample sentence is the two parts of Congress work together to make laws. Represent, doesn't she look like she's representing everybody? Yes. <laughs> Thank you elect senator population i love our pictures i'm so proud of our pictures honestly <laughs> to serve in a political office speaker of the house voting member okay we always cheer for nancy and people really like this because it's very simple very clear um uh listening for it so hit the listen for it Members of Congress represent people, the people of their states. And it's just not the vocabulary, but it's the vocabulary and context. So, of course, you would choose 
number one. Yes. Our choices are this lady who looks like she's representing people or a guy who looks like he's uh, kind of weighing uh, pros and cons there and uh, the uh, statue holding the weights. Okay, so let's see if we get it right. Yay, we're so good. Correct, two stars, now select next. Okay, let's do one more. I'm gonna select listen. California is the state with the largest population. Hmm, population, is it this one that looks like a bunch of people all over the, the map of the US? Okay, these folks, these folks, let's go with this one. Yay. Yeah, we would. We were confused on that one. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> that's not California. I know, it's population. Because so, mm -hmm. what we do is we basically have each vocabulary word has one picture. And that was our population one. OK, so let's look at another thing here. Let's see, what is this one? Let's watch. OK, so this is a little video that my team created, the legislative branch. Fast forward us. Here we go. We'll just look at a little bit of it. The US federal government has three main branches. The legislative branch, also called Congress, makes laws. Members of Congress. You can also turn on the CC. Oh, that's closed true. Caption. Yes. You can turn on the closed caption. And what I really liked, especially about that video, is you were using the graphic from USA.gov, uh, which is basically, uh, uh, it's a infographic used by the government a lot in uh rep oh, sorry i'm taking back what i said that's okay yeah okay so one thing you'll notice <clears throat> as you watch these videos that we created what we tried to do was to take all of the questions related to that topic so let's say they were i don't know five or ten or whatever related to the legislative branch um, and then we tried to basically glue each of those questions together with a little tiny bit of glue so we didn't want a big long video that had a bunch of unnecessary stuff in it. We just wanted to teach those questions with some visuals and audio. So anyway, I think those turned out pretty nice. All right, so here we have the video showing again, if someone wants to watch it again, and then we have a multiple choice question. Um, a US Senator represents, let's see, all the people of the state, all the citizens of Washington DC, or all the people of the city. Yay, I got it right, okay. All right, so let's see here. Um, yes, we have some nice grammar. There is, there are. I don't know, um, Jennifer, you wanna say anything about this lovely grammar chart? Uh, I make mistakes myself, so. <laughs> okay, then let's the pass chart. on having you do it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a little grammar chart about um, there is and there are, and then we keep that chart on screen while we display the multiple choice question. Okay, and then here we have, oh, so you're probably familiar with the lovely set of videos that USCIS made. We just love them where the officer is looking straight at the camera and asking each of the 100 questions. And, and these those, are real officers, they're not actors. Yeah, and we really love these because we wanted to give applicants a, a true feeling of what is it like when I go into that office and I sit down and the person is looking at me and asking me questions. Um, so anyway, so we were excited about these. So we took these and we have the question. Who makes federal laws? Congress, Senate, and House of Representatives, US or national legislature. So we took, took those, those, those little videos um, and we actually do various things with them throughout the course. You'll notice um, at different points, we use only the question. And then we have the applicant practice saying the answer. Um, so anyway, those are pretty fun. Let me see, here's, oh, here, okay. So here's an example of that. So here I'm on a pronunciation practice activity. I'm supposed to play the video to hear the question, select, listen to hear the answer. So how many US senators are there? How many US senators are there? And so here we're kind of, we're helping the, the learners, you know, we're, we're showing the answer. So I'm gonna hit listen. 100. Now I'm gonna click speak, 100. Now I'm gonna click playback. 100. 100, and I hear my voice followed by the voice of uh, the native English speaker. Okay, so that's how we um, have kind of creatively maximized those videos from USCIS. 
Uh, let me see, what is this one? Practice quiz. Okay, so here is a multiple choice thing. We let the learners interact with this information in as many ways as we possibly can. <clears throat> okay, so let me show you how we help learners prepare for the, lead the reading test part of this. So it's called Read Aloud. Okay, reading test practice. Okay, so I'm gonna listen. This, I'm supposed, the instructions say to select listen to hear the text. And so let me do that and click and listen. Where does Congress meet? Where does Congress meet? Where does Congress meet? Where does Congress meet? So I'm just practicing reading. Okay. And then you, you know what I've done with those? I've yeah. also used that as, uh, so they hear the, they hear that, but then I give them a dictation after that. Oh, very nice. Yeah. That's yeah. very nice. All right. Let me show you how we help learners uh, practice for the writing aspect of the naturalization test. Okay. So write it. Okay. Writing test practice. Here we go. Okay. So <clears throat> the instructions say that I'm supposed to select listen and then enter the word or sentence that I hear. Remember to use capital letters and punctuation, then select check. So let's do that. I'm hitting listen. Congress meets in Washington, DC. All right, let's see how I do here. If I get anything wrong, it will turn red. Okay, what was it? Oh! <laughs> <gasps> Teacher, Please. oh my God, uh, you need two S's. Oh no. Okay, so let me go over here. I'm in a backspace. Uh huh. You noticed how it turned red? That was my clue that it was wrong. Uh oh, that's wrong too. And I'm supposed to capitalize Washington, right? Because we are tough graders and we require um, correct punctuation. What was it? What did the sentence even say? I forgot what it said. DC. Okay, there we go. Let's check again. Okay. Oof, I did better that time. That was a tough I, one. I have one student Oof. who was really upset about this. If she would, went over and over again, it was- Could not get it. Said, no, no, no. Congress <laughs> melts in Washington, DC. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, mm -hmm. yes, actually it does. That does, that is true. But that's not what the guy really said. Hot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. So that's how we teach writing. And I know um, during the actual real test, I don't think they grade that hard but we're a computer, it's right or it's wrong. And um, I'd rather grade extra, be a little strict on our grading and, and have our people extra well prepared when they really show up for their test. Okay, so I'm watching the clock, it's 9.42. Um, okay, so one thing I would like to show you is our um, learning log. Yes. And that's at the very end of each section. <clears throat> and that's where we basically have a list of um, all the various things that we hope or not all of this, some of the things we hope that folks learned um, during that, you know, in that lesson. And so basically you end up with a list where you check off, did you learn this, 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 this. Um, and uh, for some reason it's not loading. Um, and depending on how many you checked off, if you answered 80% or more, then you get a nice note that says, good job, you're ready to go to the next lesson. And if you, clicked 79% or fewer of those boxes, you get a message that says something like, you learned a lot, but you might feel more comfortable during your naturalization interview if you do this one again, something like that. Andrea, we did receive a question oh, yes. from Edith. Yes. She says, for the writing practice in the interview, does the officer ask the student to write the sentence or make them copy it? Oh, that's uh, a good question. Yeah. Jennifer, they, I'll they, let you. They, um, they're using an iPad right now um, mm -hmm. and they act, so you're using a stylus and, it, and if it's really problematic, they can use their finger on the iPad, but they are say, so they actually read the question and then they actually write, they, the, the officer dictates a sentence, a declarative sentence to them. So, so it's kind of like it's kind of like what I showed a moment ago where the student yeah. hears something and then they have to write it, right? So like the students are gonna read who meets in Washington, DC, and then the officer will say, confirm whether or not the student got that correct. And then they'll ask the, the student, okay, here's the, the iPad. I want you to write 
Congress meets in Washington, D.C. Congress meets in Washington, D.C. They repeat it two times. If they and so they want to make sure that the the civics question or the civics vocabulary is co correct. So all the vocabulary on that that writing and spelling sheet that has to be correct. So the key words are Congress and Washington D.C. If somebody screws up and writes a Z instead of an I in is, they're not going to be they're not going to worry about that. But they want to make sure that they get Congress and Washington D.C. correct. So Jennifer, I've just popped up the um, USCIS yeah. list of the writing vocabulary. Right. Do you want to say anything about this? Yeah, I wanted to. So let me see. I'm going to un, I'm going to start my video. And so the writing, they're not equal. The writing and the, the reading are complementary. So for instance, you may have to you have to be able to read Abraham Lincoln, but you're only going to write the word Lincoln. OK, you may be able to uh, they're going to ask you to read George Washington, but you're going to only have to write Washington. So there's a little bit of a difference, and it's very interesting actually to show that at, on a Venn diagram in your classroom uh, when they are when they're sh when you do a compare. And here you don't have to be able to read the word uh, atoms. Or, right. Yeah. So you don't here's have to. so this is the reading vocabulary list. So it seems like it definitely be worth having those two lists kind of printed out and. Yeah, nice. and there's no set. There's no official set. Set. Blah, blah, blah. There's no official set of the dictation questions, uh, or dictate dictation sentences, but we do have this reading and writing vocabulary. And remember when, um, uh, in November and December, people were right were asking, "Hey, is there going to be updates to the reading and writing vocabulary?" Because we're we were really concerned about the 128 questions. The 128 questions didn't have any geography vocabulary, but there is geography vocabulary on um, on the reading and writing questions. So we're like, hey, what's going on here? Um, and this started to be one of the first indications that, hey, maybe USCIS is not going to uh, move forward with the 128 questions because they weren't updating things like the reading and writing vocabulary list they weren't updating the lesson plan list, those kind of things. So uh, they were really waiting and trying to um, respond the best they could and stiff through those responses. Right, right. So, we'll, thank you. We do have a question. Well, we have a comment and a question. Mm -hmm. um, Gail says, I have a teacher account in my own citizenship class at USA Learns. My students get extra attendance hours in my adult school class after Excellent. I access USA Learns reports that show how much time they have spent using the class there. That's fabulous. Wow, That's really question, great. The question is, question about writing vocabulary. Is capitalization important? For example, with father of our country or president, if not used as a title, Washington was the first president. Uh, Washington, no, it's, they're not gonna, they're not gonna knock them off for capitalization on that. No, no. They grade it pretty easy, really. Right. OK. Hey, you know, um, do you mind if I share my screen really super quickly? That's fine. And then I'm okay. keeping an eye on the clock. But yes, please do. OK. So one of the things, yes, one of the things that uh, ju just occurred to me, yeah, uh, as we were going through this, was here when we're t we're talking about the different sections. Oh, sorry, the different sections of the N four hundred practice, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the reading and writing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how do I extend that into my own classroom? And the way I extend that into my own classroom. So, say for instance, we just had a section in there about uh, crime. I would go on to to my N four hundred section of my own. Um, my own website and here i've divided out the um n400 into 30 separate interviews that you can you can use as uh, 
that are PDFs that you can copy, download and copy. So here I would go to the crime section. Again, I have some very simple illustrations, okay? But down here, I have the questions and then I have the, I have a question, have you ever been a prostitute? And then the follow-up question, hmm. what, what do they do? They sell sex. So this is one way that I've been able to get the students back into going out to USA Learns, learning the vocabulary, bringing them back in the classroom so they can do paired practice. That's fabulous. About this vocabulary. That's fabulous. So again, you can take you can uh you can download the separate pdfs or you can simply download uh which one is it you can download this one to for all the uh the uh 30 pdfs also i have uh other interview um inter other interview practices but anyway that's, that's one great. way to extend out uh, that's US awesome other. thank okay, you go ahead. and and yeah, please visit her website. Um, she is, tell us, our, is it US, what is the, what is the URL of your website? Uh, USCitizenPod.com. Okay, fabulous. Okay, so let's see here. Share. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm keeping an eye on the clock. We've got about <laughs> 10 minutes left. I wanna share with you a few key things that I think are important um, that people often ask. And so one question is, um, how do my students register? And these, the related question is, how do I, as a teacher, preview the courses as if I were a student? And what I'm gonna show you now answers both of these two questions, okay? Okay, so first thing you do is go to usalearns.org. And um, to register, you're going to click on the big red start now button on our homepage. And then you're gonna register as a student. Um, and so it's just, you're just putting in an email address, use a real one, please. Um, entering first name, last name, and entering the password two times. You need to talk about why you need to use a real one, okay? Tell me, tell one me. One of the, reason, the reasons why is the USCIS is really trying to encourage people to use email addresses to file online. This is a way that you can start prepping up your students to file their application online. That's a great and, point. Um, uh, it's all it's so it's important when you're bringing the, your students to the computer lab if they can actually have one tab open to their their uh, email address or to their mail. So this is going to help them practice. What is your email address? What is your password? Memorize it. Okay, that's great. So anyway, thank please. you. Great point. Okay, and then after you fill out the little form, then you have to go check your email. So you go, you check your email. There's going to be one from USA Learns with this big old long blue link. Click it, and that will help us confirm that you're a really a real person. Um, and then also you'll be able to win, win. And if you forget your password, you can use the forgot your password link. Otherwise, you're in trouble. <laughs> okay, so then you're going to sign in. Um, and I'm going to just go a little quickly here. Okay, so now you might be wondering how you, as a teacher, create your own teacher account and your own free USA Learns courses. So let's check that out. Okay, so you're gonna to go to usalearns.org slash teacher, make sure you are there. Um, and you're gonna click the big register button. And we're gonna fill out the little registration form. It's very easy. Um, it's basically just email address, first name, last name, alias, aliases, what name do you want? your students to see for you? Like, is it Mrs. Smith? Is it Sally? Okay, and then this is just the second half of that form. If you scroll down, you're picking your country, your agency type, your agency name, and creating a password and entering it two times. Okay, just like the students do, you're gonna check your email. There's one from us and click the big link to confirm it. And now you're ready to get started with the real deal which is you wanna create a class. And so here on the My Home page, it's gonna look kind of blank at first because you don't have any classes. So you'll click the big Start a New Class button. And you're gonna fill out a little form to enter your class details, uh, the title, maybe it's English One or whatever, um, or Citizenship 
course or whatever you want to call it. And then this is a pull down. This based on course is a pull down menu. So if you want to create a citizenship course, click that button and then select USA Learn Citizenship. Write a little description. It doesn't have to be anything great. It doesn't really matter. Enter a start date. I suggest today is a great day to start. And I also suggest don't put an end date unless you really, really want it to end because on that date, no one will be able to get into your course. So just don't put anything there. Okay, now let me tell you about the very cool and magical thing which will let you connect your students to your teacher account. So you can see their progress and their scores and how much time they're spending and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is a screenshot of my fake account. I'm not really a teacher. So I only have fake accounts and fake students. But um, let's say uh, I want to add a new student to my first English course. Um, so here on this page, you'll notice this column here entitled class key, and that's a really important column. So I would copy this eight digit code um, and each class has a different key. So copy that code and I'm gonna give it to all the learners in my class. Okay, so let's imagine for a moment, I'm a learner, okay? I'm a learner and you're my teacher, okay? Let's imagine you gave me that code and I'm gonna come in here. I'm already registered, I'm logged into USA Learns. I'm gonna click on this enroll in my teacher's class link, right? So I click it. And now I paste or I type that key, that class key into the field and I hit enroll now. And now I am magically in your class, okay? So next time you log in, you'll see me um, on your lists and um, you'll be able to monitor my progress. So um, what do you think, Jennifer? Would we be better off right now, me showing them just really fast what it looks like inside the teacher account or talk sure. about remote yeah. learning ideas? Let's do that, okay. So let me go to the teacher side, usalearns.org slash teacher. Okay, I'm gonna sign in with my teacher account because I have a teacher account and a student account. Oops, that's the wrong one. This one, please. So I'm gonna go in there and it's really great because um, I can see, let's just show you. Again, not gonna be very impressive because I don't have any students who have been doing anything. But if I wanna see what the students in my first English course have been up to, I click it. I click on the name of the course and up pops this little box so I can manage my course. Here I can do the class roster. I can manage messages. I can send my students messages um, on their homepage of USA Learns. I can see some cool activity by class info. I can share the class key and I can edit class details. For the moment, let's view class roster. Okay, so here are my fake students got Carlos and test student. And um, here I can see their name, their email address, when they enrolled, when they accessed it last. This is a good thing to keep an eye on, right? So you can say, wait a minute, uh, Carlos, you haven't been in here since April 2nd of 2020, what's up? And I can also deactivate students by clicking on this little icon here, bring them back too. So let's see what Carlos has been up to. I don't think he's been up to very much. Okay, so I clicked on his name. Now I can see his scores and the student grade book. Let's see what his scores are. Okay, so here I can see he's at least done something in this first unit, but not a whole lot. This half filled in box, meaning he has at least started. Okay, he has not done much at all. I really need to call this kid. Okay, he's done something in this one. Okay, he's only, he completed one activity. He watched that welcome video. He did it once and he spent 19 seconds doing it. So, okay, that's a little peek at that. Andrea, I'm going to have to step away because I Please have to Please do. I know you morning. have class. Okay. Thank you for joining us. It was fabulous to have you as always. Goodbye, Eddie, Jennifer. If anybody needs to contact, contact me, this is my email address. And thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Andrea. You. Thank so you for joining us. Talk to you later. Great okay? to have you, Jennifer. Thank you okay, so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. All right. So that was a little quick little peek at the, um, the teacher side. And I am going to just share with you now a couple little updates. Oh, does deactivate mean the same thing as deleting them? It's not, there is a question. Does deactivate mean the same as deleting a student? It's, it's not exactly the same. Um, if you delete them, they're really, really gone and deactivating them means maybe they went on vacation for a while and just need to kind of turn them off for a while. Okay, so I've got a, got a three, min, three minutes left. So let me just share with you a few exciting updates, okay? So um, one thing that's pretty cool is we are, um, I'm working with Lisa Takeuchi. We're gonna be doing some, um, a little experiment, um, which I'll tell you about in a moment. 
We are also in the process of creating a new course called Access America, and USA Learns is coming soon on phone. So first the experiment, Elisa and I are gonna do what we're gonna call a teacher talk on our USA Learns Facebook Live page. And um, she is going to do a little lesson teaching via Facebook Live. So that should be pretty cool. Stay tuned and cross your fingers for us because it's gonna be a little wild and crazy. Also, I want you to know, US, very, very exciting. USA Learns in the fall will be upgraded to function on phones. We got a very generous grant from Dollar General Literacy Foundation. So the site's gonna have a new look and feel and will function on phones. So the activities will shift and resize and all that stuff for people who are on phones. Um, Access America course is in production. It will help immigrants integrate into the US society. It will cover civics, linguistic, economic, and local integration. And that is what I wanted to share with you. Um, Holly has posted a note, take a minute please to fill out the evaluation. I would love you to do that um, because I'm hoping that our friends at OTAN um, are able to um, have this be one of the videos that, that they um, can make live. Um, can remediate for accessibility. And um, okay, so that is my presentation. And I think I'm just on time.